It's hard to imagine climate change taking down our whole civilization. But some of the most powerful civilizations in history have been felled by climate. Here's how three thriving civilizations came to their end. The Anasazi is one startling example. The first people to arrive in North America went to the American Southwest in 11,000 BC. From those peoples arose the Anasazi. These ancient ones predated the Diné, or Navajo, people. Although the Anasazi settled throughout the Southwest, in 600 AD, they created their largest settlement in the Chaco Canyon area of New Mexico. At that time, the surrounding desert had variable rains and forested mountain ranges. But the Anasazi created innovative irrigation techniques that allowed them to thrive, even with little rainfall. The Chaco Canyon was an environmental oasis. The area had wild plants and animals, trees for logs and firewood, and could support a large population. In Chaco Canyon in northern New Mexico, the Chaco Anasazi built a complex society that thrived for over five centuries. Their buildings were the largest and tallest ever built in North America prior to the 1880s, some as big as the base of the Sears Tower. But a severe natural drought hit in 1130, rendering Anasazi agriculture incredibly difficult, and they had more people than ever to feed. The Anasazi scrambled for solutions, but they had depleted the groundwater, they had depleted and eroded the soils, and once the soils and groundwater were gone, the landscape turned into desert which led to widespread starvation, warfare, and death. The Anasazi who remained then abandoned the area, and their once great civilization became ruins. The story of the Anasazi tells us what happens when a civilization lives beyond its means, when it degrades the environment and overuses the resources, all in the midst of climate change. Today, the Southwest is suffering a 19-year drought, worse than most mega droughts, with no signs of respite. The difference is that today, humans are making the climate change and drought worse. Starting in 980 AD, many Icelandic Vikings went to Greenland, seeking abundant farmland, freshwater, and thriving animal life. Vikings thrived there for several centuries, until they abruptly left. A volcano eruption changed Greenland's climate. It made the temperatures much colder, increased sea ice, and made ocean storms stronger. One theory is that the Vikings continued to force their agriculture techniques in a changing environment. In order to keep livestock, they had to cut down trees to clear land for pasture. But the animals overgrazed the land, so when the weather turned cold, the animals starved. Meanwhile, Inuits thrived because they hunted seal and fish year-round rather than keeping livestock. Had the Vikings adopted the Inuits' ways, or if a volcano hadn't changed the climate, Perhaps this once thriving civilization would still be around. Today, we're the volcano. Greenland is seeing its ice melt at an astonishing pace because of greenhouse gases warming the atmosphere. Many Greenlanders fear what comes next. Their civilization was made up of 19 million people. They excelled in agriculture, mathematics, and astronomy. Strangely, they were also able to thrive in a difficult rainforest climate. But it wouldn't last forever. A rise in their population spurred an overuse of land and resources and deforestation of the rainforest. Rapidly cutting down forests for agriculture and timber started to change the climate. There's a reason it's called the rainforest. The dark tree cover absorbs the sun's rays, leading water to evaporate and cause more rainfall. Treeless land doesn't create the same effect and that leads to a lot less rain. The rapid deforestation worsened an already severe drought, and lack of forest cover caused erosion and soil depletion. The combination was catastrophic. Crops failed, war ensued, and the Mayans' magnificent cities were abandoned. Areas in Mexico are even now facing drought due to human-caused climate changes. Radically reshaping the surrounding environment can have unintended consequences. We may not understand them until it's too late. Reacting ahead of the curve to fix the problem is vital. Today, we are deforesting. We are eroding lands. We are causing the conditions that create drought. And we are creating climate shifts so great we may not be able to recover. But we know what we have to do to stop. We just have to do it. We must learn from the mistakes of past societies before we also become history.